But also, Vincent, I mean, it shouldn't surprise anybody, you know, because Eamon said he was surprised that there still is pay differentials between men and women. The CSO released a report in February of this year, and in almost every single area where they made a comparison in Ireland in 2009 between men and women, there was significant inequality. It's not just on pay. Women are more likely to experience poverty. Women are more likely to end up with psychiatric illness, with alcoholism, more likely to be hospitalised. Hugely underrepresented, and not just underrepresented in traditional professions, which were the preserve of men like banking, but in areas, for example, like health and education, where women are overrepresented at the lower end of the professional scale, they're dramatically underrepresented at the height. So that, I mean, the value of International Women's Day, jokes aside, is it's the day when we remind ourselves collectively that our society is grossly unequal among all the other areas and gender as well, and that unless we start to take decisive action in a whole variety of areas, we'll be here in another 5, 10, 15 years without very little change. Phil Broadly speaking, they are not doing half badly compared to the private sector, which is going That's to have to pay the taxes <coughs> to keep the public sector and, and, Look, and have these pay cuts. But we, all, aim, 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 we, we all use public services. So you don't just look at investment in public services in terms of the benefits that the workers and the services get. If you reduce investment in public services, whether in the services themselves or in the wages of workers, it affects society as a whole. It affects those of us that use the services, often some of the most marginalised sections of society, and it also affects the overall, overall economic well-being because there's less money for people to spend. What the government did was last year, they introduced a very smart strategy to try and divide public and private sector workers by somehow blaming lazy, bloated, overpaid public sector workers uh, for the, if the uh, crisis in our economy. Now that they managed to get a level of public and particularly media support for that... Don't call any government minister blaming yeah, public they, sector. Uh, over and over again we were told that our public... Who did? Over and over again we were told... Too much no, we were told that the public sector... Who did? Who did? We were told that the public sector... We were told the public sector wasn't productive enough, was overpaid uh, and was overpaid. Funded. What the government is now doing, and private sector workers are waking up to this, the government has now moved from a tax on public sector workers to a tax on private sector workers. And you're seeing a campaign that has government ministers with IBEC and ISME and others lining up not only against the minimum wage, but against wages of lower paid private sector workers. And people are realising what oh, all of this oh, is, what all of this is about. It, Eamon. We absolutely no, can't no, afford no. it. Abs no, absolutely. So, so get, where is the money going to come to keep the very, public sector very simply, wage levels very, at, the, very, at Celtic Tiger levels? Very, very simply. There were lots of alternative proposals in the run-up to Budget 2009 last December. Tax for example, well, people argued, for example, if you reformed uh, tax breaks, Task no. have said that somewhere in the region of £7 billion could have been saved from tax breaks. If you simply harmonised uh, the uh, tax breaks, for example, for pensions at either the lower level or somewhere between, mm. you'd save anywhere between £500 million and a billion. And the so there are lots break. of choices that are there. Welcome back. The resignation of Brian... Of um, Martin Collins. Well, thinking, I'm not so sure. <laughs> well, they said Martin We're about Collins. to celebrate. Frank <laughs> Cameron resigns. Wonderful. From the You're cabinet, but also from the dog causes problems, obviously, for the government. And uh, the government now has can rely on 84 votes in the dog, which is just half, uh, just over uh, 50%, 166 TDs. Uh, the opposition of 78, the three by-elections outstanding. If the opposition win the three by-elections, that makes it 81, 84. If there's a further defection or two or a loss for whatever reason, the government is in trouble. But, of course, Sinn Féin might come to the aid of the government, mightn't it? They would need to change the uh, complexion of their policies quite radically if we were to even think about it. So, no, I don't think so. Uh, Jerry Adams was very clear at the Ardesh of the weekend, we want Fianna Fáil out of government and we don't want a government that, uh, did, that brings why, in exactly the same right-wing policies why as did, Fine Gael. Why was the motion uh, uh, stipulating that Sinn Féin would not go into government with, with either Fianna Fáil or Fine Gael, why was that defeated? We had a good debate. There are some of us who think that we should have had a very clear position, which is, say to the electorate now, we don't want to be in coalition with either Fianna Fáil or Fianna Gael. Yeah, but the leadership wanted to leave their no, options open. No, in fact, the, the, the debate didn't come from the leadership. There was a variety of other activists in the South who, who proposed a motion. And if you read the text of the motion, Vincent, it's actually very important. They said very clearly they don't want Fianna Fáil in government. They also said they don't want a right-wing Fianna Gael government doing exactly the same things as Fianna Fáil. And what they said they wanted to do was Sinn Féin participation in any coalition with any party had to be on the basis of very clear policy criteria, agreed at a special Ardesh uh, after a general election. Yes, but, but so the in, motion in terms, in terms that of would have ruled out coalition with Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael was defeated. As, and, and, and the, was and defeated, the, and the motion, which means and the, that there is now more flexibility that some people in Sinn Féin wanted with regard to coalition And the motion options. that was passed, Vincent, if you read the text of it, is very clear. 
is there is no chance in hell of Fianna Fáil or Fine Gael on the basis of the current policy portfolios uh, attracting Sinn Féin into any kind of coalition deal. It's We're simply not interested in that. That's changed around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. On the basis of current that's that's policies. Not, that's the kind of double yeah. speak that has no, devalued it's, politics it's no. here. In fact, it is politics, exactly the same. There are no politics, difference no. between Sinn Féin, uh, Labour Party, there's huge differences. Fine Gael there are, and Fianna Fáil, PDs and the Greens. There are huge differences. And if you look at the rest of the content of the Ardesh, you'll see there are very substantial differences. We passed... No, no, let me make the point. We passed a major public finance policy at the Ardesh with the only party that are now saying we need a radical reform of our tax system to generate the kind of wealth but, that we need to invest can I just say, in public services. Sinn Féin, Sinn Féin in, supported in the government services. on the bank guarantee scheme and Labour were the only party to vote against that and that bank guarantee scheme saw, is what has led when us Sinn to Sinn saw, when, always worried about the banks having enough money. When Sinn Féin <laughs> saw the detail of the bank guarantee scheme, we opposed it and own, Sinn Féin own, isn't going to put Fine Gael into government after the next general own, election as the Labour Party is. What? Fine Gael who want to cut 16,000 public sector jobs. Labour want to be the dominant we all know, know and you particularly know that if the numbers are right after the next election, Sinn Féin will go into government with whoever. Uh, that's and that's not the, the case. Vincent, the that's, Sinn Féin that's, stands for almost nothing now except the same the opportunism that's not that all the other parties look at have. The policies, the other parties. Look, look at the policies we agree with. It's so different in the North than it is in the South. I don't understand. In the North, they have no problem with the economic philosophy of the DUP or the right. Well, that's it's absolutely like a different not party. true. No, it's completely that's different. A, that's no, not, absolutely it, not true. No, let him make, it, it, make, make it fine. Okay, you must admit, it, it really is quite a different uh, political culture they've entered into up, up here. Down here, they're still quite, you know, a, more, a, a marginal left-wing party. Well, up there, it seems to be no, we anything have, goes we have for the North. Absolutely not. We have Do a single all-Ireland all policy agenda. We're in coalition with the DUP, the Ulster Unionist Party and the SDLP as a conflict resolution mechanism to end, that's 50, true, to end 50 years of one party to unionist rule. It's not a sovereign government. It's not about a broad-based policy agenda. And in fact, many of the policies that we argue day and daily in Leinster House, our ministers are actively trying to implement in the Assembly. There are huge differences, Vincent, on policy between but Sinn Féin uh, and the Labour Party. Tax is one, job creation is another, the development the of the all economy. Why didn't Sinn Féin oppose it. the bank guarantee scheme in the were, there were, there were two the way votes. Labour did? There were two votes, and when we saw the detail of the scheme, we opposed it very clearly. Okay, okay, let let and in fact, no, in fact, when, 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 when the Labour Party let Ivan reply. Let Ivan reply. And don't interrupt her. Ivan, no, no. And also, there, Ill Cullen wins the Doll Lottery. An interesting point there. Minister uh, Martin Cullen last night resigned from the government for health reasons and won the Doll Lotto. The Waterford TD will pocket a whopping two hundred and fifty thousand euro in the next twelve months, and a cool one hundred thousand a year after that. He gets an untaxed un lump sum of 139,500 and an annual pension of 106,000 for the rest of his life. Oh, that, that's quite something, isn't it? Also, it really this is. is. This is why workers, whether they're public or private, are so angry because, on the one hand, they've been told to take significant cuts to very low levels of pay, and every day we open the newspapers and it's either another government politician or another ex banker or another developer getting a payout or a large pension or substantial sums of money. Like, it's not enough to give out about it. There's a case to say the public sector pay at the higher end should be capped. And political yeah. parties and other commentators capped should be saying level. capped at somewhere between 100 and 150,000. In Sinn Féin's, in Sinn Féin's pre-budget submission before the last budget, we argued for public sector pay to be capped somewhere between 100 and 150,000 euros a year. So that it wouldn't be possible to pay people start-off salaries, for example, for consultants of 150 to 200,000 uh, or a variety of other senior public sector workers. And if the argument is that you have to pay people large salaries uh, to get talent, look at who's running the country. They're paid more than most of their equivalents across the European Union and they're doing an appalling job.